Yes, indeed. We're in Austin, Texas. I've been hanging out near Austin recently, too. In fact, I'm living right now on a ranch outside of Austin and learning some organic farming and gardening techniques from all the wonderful organic farmers that exist in Texas. Really great bunch of folks. Really awesome people. There's, there's a lot of awareness in Texas about freedom issues and what's going on with food, the food supply. I mean, people, I mean, people ask me every day, conventional ranchers are asking me questions like, hey, how can I make my cows more natural? And I'm like, hey, stop, uh, stop feeding them genetically modified corn. That, that would be one thing. And they're open to that. Really, just really cool people here in Texas. I'm liking this place. Um, I, may, I may decide to stick around. It's a good, good state. Now, joining us today to talk more about food freedom and food regulations, dietary supplements, and the labeling bill that's now being pushed through Congress is health freedom attorney Jonathan Emord. And Jonathan Emord is just really one of the top thinkers, speakers, writers, analyzers in the world on issues of health freedom, dietary supplement regulation, other topics. Even he's written a book called The Rise of Tyranny, which explains how the FDA and the USDA and other government agencies get out of control. How does it happen? How come Congress doesn't have authority over the regulations that these agencies roll out and try to steamroll us with? Well, Jonathan's book explains that, so check that out if you get a chance. One of my favorite books. He also has a book uh, called, let's see, The Global Censorship of Health Information, something like that. I'll ask him about that when he, when he gets on here. In fact, are you, are you with us, Jonathan? I'm here, Mike. Good to be with you. Good to be with you, too. Sorry to mangle the title of your second book there. <laughs> That's all right. Global Censorship of Health Information. Both are available through Amazon.com. Awesome. Awesome. Two of my favorite books. I really appreciate your writing and your leadership on this issue. Now, let's start with the new dietary ingredients requirements that the FDA is threatening to burden us with all across the country to question or, let's say, require a new sort of approval of all ingredients that were introduced into dietary supplements since 1994. Can you break down that issue for us, Jonathan? Sure. Uh, this is a horrendous expansion of federal power out of the bureaucracy uh, with the full blessing of the Congress of the United States, principally those uh, people like Dick Durbin, who sponsored these measures, who really, really detest individual liberty. He loves the government, hates individual liberty, and has proven that point over and over again by favoring measures that deprive people of liberty and have the government basically uh, determine what's in your own best interest rather than allowing you to, which is the ultimate in destruction of individual liberty. But for decades, you know, Mike, the FDA has repeatedly tried to either reclassify dietary supplements as unsafe food additives put a limit on the quantitative amount of ingredients and say anything above the RDA level makes it a drug, or otherwise restrict the availability of supplements in the market. And those have come up against significant public opposition. But the uh, lessons learned from those battles by the agency did not result in them changing their interest in removing supplements from the market, but changing their tactics. So right. now they go after supplements under the guise of food safety or health safety. And they're doing the same with organic food producers. Essentially, the government of the United States, and principally the Food and Drug Administration, is a captive of leading industry. In the case of the FDA, it's a patsy for the drug industry. In fact, the FDA Associate Director of the Office of Drug Safety, David Graham, has said that the FDA uh, is views the drug industry as its client and will approve as many drugs as it possibly can uh, in order to placate the interests, the financial interests of that industry. And so we have many unsafe drugs that have been approved into the market. Yet on the other side, where people can take control of their own health through organic foods and through dietary supplements, the FDA has gone after those things with a vengeance. But here's what's happening legislatively and at the FDA with this new emphasis on, on quote-unquote, safety. The, the Food Safety Modernization Act, which Dick Durbin principally promoted, a uh, liberal Democratic senator from Illinois. And this is the act that passed in December of last year. Exactly, and it is now being implemented by FDA. And what FDA is doing is using...
adding its new power and new uh, army of agents, the bill will enable in the next several years the FDA to have some 20,000 new inspectors. And its aim, this bill requires every food producer to be registered with the federal government for the first time in American history. And by every food producer, I mean every one. I'm talking about the organic food farmer who gets his food to the market. He's going to have to register with the FDA. The farm that you're on right now, Mike, the owner of that farm is going to have to register with the FDA. And in addition to registering with the FDA, he's going to have to be inspected by federal agents. And they, if they find anything remiss, even if the products are perfectly safe, if they find anything remiss on his farm, they can do a reinspection and charge him the cost of the inspection. FDA estimates that they will raise $100 million, that's a conservative estimate, in the first year of implementation of this. So just, wait, just, just to be clear here, Jonathan, the, the issue here is that these sm even small farms, we're talking about small local farms, the people who are selling food at your local farmer's market, they are going to be in a government database as a food producer, and they are going to have to uh, apply or at least be, be regulated by the FDA. All that talk, remember during the food safety debate, they said these small farmers are going to be exempt, but that was a lie, wasn't it? They're not really exempt. They still have to be in, in the FDA's database and abide by many regulations. They're still going to have to register. They're still going to have to be under FDA scrutiny. Every food producer is under FDA scrutiny right now. The, the difference is that this bill puts into the FDA's uh, power base an enormous army of inspectors and a requirement, a set of requirements that force these outfits to register with the federal government for the first time. And that's the, the big thing here is not this is this is not a food safety bill. This is a federal government control bill. This bill is designed to take away from the local health and safety people who are responsible for ensuring the integrity of the local food market the power to make ultimate determinations and giving that to the Centralized Food and Drug Administration, which has an axe to grind. It's lobbied heavily by the major food producers, lobbied heavily by the drug industry. When it comes to these small producers, they have significantly created a economic threat to the market share of large food producers who are not organic. Well, that's and what this is, John. This is this is a declaration of war against small farmers. I, I already spoke. I, I have on camera farmers in Texas who say because of this bill, they are not going to expand. They're not going to grow. They're not going to hire more people. They're going to essentially start shutting down their food operations because they can't deal with the paperwork burden. So this is going to drive small local farmers out of business. And as you're explaining, that's the entire point of the thing. Now, as if this weren't bad enough, then you've got Dick Durbin, who just introduced, this is the liberal senator from Illinois, this fellow uh, has absolutely nothing in common with the founding fathers of the United States. In fact, every principle the founding fathers believed in fundamentally, he opposes to his very core. And so it's not surprising that he is aggressively advocating federal government takeover of various market sectors and massive increases in federal spending and in regulation. And he just introduced a bill called the Dietary Supplement Labeling Act. Now, this bill will require every dietary supplement company to register with the Food and Drug Administration, but also will require them to turn over to the Food and Drug Administration a list of every ingredient and every product that they make, as well as every label for every product they make and all advertising and promotional material. What the FDA uh, uh, commissioner will then do with that is evaluate it and determine whether there's any possibility of risk that could arise from the products. Now, of course, every product ingredient in the world, even water, will at some dose level create a risk. Therefore, at the discretion of the FDA commissioner, she can remove from the market or order you to stop selling any product. Now, it gets worse than this. Under the Food Safety Modernization Act, the right to trial by jury is taken away from anyone accused of violating the act. You have to go through an administrative court at the FDA. So the very party that is accusing you of wrongdoing will try your case. Are you getting this, folks? Are you getting this? You can be hauled into a kangaroo court 
and face a, a non-legal trial, just a trumped-up trial from the same people who accuse you based on their opinions, saying that one of your ingredients may have some kind of health risk that isn't even proven, right? I mean, they, right. they can just fabricate this. And in and addition, just like the, the uh, forfeiture laws, the, the law here, the Food Safety Modernization Act, allows the FDA to summarily take away your registration Suspend your registration so you don't have the right to sell anything while the agency proceeds with the administrative process. So they take away all your resources, your, your funding, while they try you in the administrative court. So you can't defend yourself. You can't, you can't even afford a, an attorney. So you're effectively guilty until proven innocent because they are taking away your ability to earn a living while they try you. What, Jonathan, what, what is the reaction to this? Is I mean, this is one of the key questions I wanted to ask you today. Is the dietary supplements industry pulling together in some way? I mean, I already heard from, from Bill Falloon at the Life Extension Foundation. He's interested in taking action on this. Some others, I don't want to mention their names, have, have talked to me about possible actions. What are you hearing as the health freedom attorney in the U.S.? of organization to help combat these NDI regulations, for example? You know, this is a tragedy that I, I explain in the rise of tyranny and in, also in global censorship of health information. But this is a great tragedy because, you see, the dietary supplement market, as the yeoman farmers in the, in the organic market are today, was a very vibrant, independent, you would say libertarian uh, group of people who were anti-government and very much in favor of self-help and achieving things through hard work and honest living, people that the Founding Fathers would have adored. And that industry's leaders went to the FDA with a thing called the Good Manufacturing Practice Guidelines, and they argued to the industry that you've got to work with the FDA. You have to allow the FDA to regulate our industry more because if you don't, they view us with this hostile regard. And unless we befriend them and show them that we're good actors and that we make good products, they're going to attack us. And so they went in with this idiotic conception that if you allow the FDA to regulate products <clears throat> by your own agreement from the creation of them till re they reach the market, process controls over every aspect of production, that the agency will like you. <laughs> but what has happened is they miscalculated their lobbying power. Exactly. And what they did is give the drug industry the ability to destroy the supplement industry and the FDA the legal authority to come in and act as the proxy of the drug industry. They miscalculated their lobbying power. They're not it inside the FDA. The other, drug they industry they said, okay, let's befriend the FDA, let's play nice, and then they'll treat us nice. And, so but the now, FDA turned out... years of telling the industry that this was a mistake and arguing at the outset that they, this is horrendous, you shouldn't do this, I've, I, I've now had the uh, word back from folks telling me, hey, we didn't realize it would go this way. It's what you predicted then. It's horrific for us now. It hasn't gotten better. It's so much worse that we, we can barely take it. And what's happened is the big guys are finding out that it's, it, it's, 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 it's absolutely beyond the cost estimation they figured it well, it's would gonna be. It's going to destroy them. Predict it's going to put them out of business. It's going to slap them in the face next. Yeah, I mean, who, who can afford the regulatory burden, the paperwork burden? You have to uh, uh, individually apply for every new ingredient that's been introduced since 1994. You have to turn in all your marketing materials. I mean, Jonathan, even the drug companies don't have to provide all this documentation. That's right, and what's really tragic about this, when you take into account the FDA's recent proposal for uh, guidance for new dietary ingredients, is that they're squeezing the supplement industry from every angle. You've got... Uh, increased costs on the order of approximately $150,000 a year for the average supplement company, and the average supplement company only makes profits of about 100000 at most a year. So you've got $150,000 of regulatory costs from GMP enforcement. You've got to top that, the new Food Safety Modernization Act, which requires registration, additional legal fees for that, and, uh, and inspections, and require you to pay for the cost of the inspection.